Hello, I'm Jim Cassetta. Welcome back, local history librarian for the Pearl River Public Library. And today we're going to speak to Carol Rindler, who lives on Old Middletown Road in a very historic home. We're going to talk to her about the library, her participation in it, and um, also a little bit about her life, her library usage, all, you know, when she was growing up, where she's from, that sort of thing. And so let's welcome her. Hi, Carol. How Hi, are Jim. You? I'm good. How are you? Good. So describe to me what it was like growing up in Nyack, New York. Well, when we li when I was growing up in Nyack, it was a very small community. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was very nice growing up. Uh, people were very friendly. Mm -hmm. Lots of kids around to play with. Right. And uh, lots of things to do. Back then, I mean, all summer long, we rode our bikes. It was safe. And all winter long, we either sleigh, went sleigh riding or ice skating. Mm -hmm. Now, one of, one of the activities, I would assume, is that you, you probably use the public library. Sure, the Nyack Public Library. Right, which is a Carnegie Library. Yeah. We yeah. could have had a Carnegie Library here in 1915. We were offered one, but the uh, powers that be decided it would be far too expensive for the upkeep in a, what was considered a backwater town. So we didn't get that, but we've had a long history here of reading. Are you an avid reader? Yes. Very good. How, describe to me what you like to read, uh, you know, as far as genre. I like to read uh, fiction, mm -hmm. action adventures, mm -hmm. sometimes biographies, okay. mysteries. Right. You know, whatever strikes the mood. Okay, so you like you like more upbeat. Um, I like an exciting adventure. There you go. That's, <gasps> that's what I love. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, gosh knows we have a lot of those. And here. of course, down at the Nyack Library, back in those days, you didn't have computers. I mean, any homework assignments or class assignments, you know, everybody would meet down at the library and get their books and, you know, do mm -hmm. their assignments. Mm -hmm. Right. That was so it's pretty much de rigueur what young people did in libraries and in the 1950s and 60s. Yeah. That's great. That's really good. Now, um, when did you come to Pearl River? Uh, we moved to Pearl River about uh, 30 years ago. Okay. What year? That would have been... Uh, Got her, I guess, around 1995. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, right. You I moved up from the city. I was you, living in Manhattan. Oh, okay. And then you do, You decided to come up, you know, for quieter pace of life yeah. here. Yeah. Cheaper. It was always my goal, uh, you know, to live in the city for a while mm -hmm. and then move up to the area again. Very good. Yeah. A lot of people do that. That's, uh, that's interesting how that... That's been happening a very long time in Pearl River. And especially after you have a child. It's so expensive in the city, and the school systems are much different. Yes. Oh, yeah. They're absolutely much more different. So you came to Pearl River. Describe to me what you thought of the town. And you can compare it to Nyack when you were a child. Well, actually, I had a lot of experience here in Pearl River because my aunt and my uncle had lived here in Pearl River for probably 20 years. And we were always over at their house for, um, you know, for certain events, for, right. for Christmas and Easter and things like that. Right. And the St. Patty's Day Parade, of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody knows Pearl River about. I was one time at an Irish bar on the west side in Manhattan having lunch. And the woman who was the bartender, she came to me. And she says, where are you from? I said, oh, a little place upstate. I don't know. Maybe you have heard it at Pearl River, New York. And the whole place burst out laughing because all the men were tradesmen who lived in Pearl River. Sure. For, sure. You know, construction workers, drywall, whatever they were doing. So that's the other thing. So now you, you came to Pearl River, and I know you were coming in, and your sister also comes in, Pat. Yes. Um, and her uh, husband. Bruce, uh, how, uh, what, among the family, what, what is your feeling about the Pearl River Library? Oh, uh, I personally think it's great. 
you offer an awful lot of programs for, you know, different age groups. Right. When I talk to friends of mine that live in different counties, um, you know, or different areas here in Rockland County, they don't have the same um, advantages in their libraries that, you know, you offer here as far as, you know, the, all the different programs go. That's great. As a matter of fact, I'm writing a uh, history of the Pearl River Library that will be due out this fall, and that is what in the 1960s, when in 63, when this building was built, the um, director of the library was that type. Basically, she tried to keep up with trends. Um, she was very hip. The teenagers loved her. They had rock and roll bands. They had look in, book in, um, just a lot. And she also instituted a lot of cultural things that weren't available in Pearl River or any library at mm -hmm. that time. So I guess Pearl River can pride itself on always being on the cutting edge. And today we have technology and we're always, our director is always looking toward the future mm -hmm. to see, you know, what's going on. Uh, you know, in, in society in general, because we have to reflect that to, to stay Sure, you viable. have to keep up. Yeah, keep up with the Joneses. That's stuff. right. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's, what are some of the programs? Now, you mentioned all the programs. What are some of the programs that you really enjoy? The chair yoga I've been doing since the first one, Excellent. since you first started. I guess right. that was six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So I do that. I go to movie night. Okay. I go to the games um, Monday afternoon and play Mahjong. Mahjong, right. And I now I'm coming to the library on Thursday mornings to learn Canasta. Oh, excellent. And I've gone to a lot of the concerts here. Mm -hmm. Now, when, what, do you feel that what we offer here is a better value than if you had to get it somewhere else? Oh, of course. Okay. It's convenient. Mm -hmm. Everybody here is very nice, very helpful. Good. That's wonderful. That's really great. And now I want to mention that your daughter, Caitlin, also worked here as a page during her high school years, and now she's done very well for herself. Yeah, she's a teacher up at North Rockland now. Excellent. There you go. So it, the way I think of it is that, that her experience really paid off working here because now she um, she's a, a teacher herself and has that background of books and research. And I remember she would ask me questions that if somebody caught her in the stacks, they would say, oh, do you have anything about the, um, the Crimean War? And she would come out and get me. And then she would ask me, what, what was the Crimean War about? And we would talk about it. And that, that's something I really enjoy. That's a, I really enjoy the kids when they come from school to work here. What do you want to see in the future as far as the library goes? I think just, uh, you know, hopefully a continuation of the programs that you have. Okay. You know, um, I'm so busy now. I don't have much <laughs> free time. Or anything else. Right. I, well, yeah, uh, I'm sure I might bat with that because everybody, including my parents, who were, aside from work, were never busy, really. But, yes, there's with all that free time comes um, involvement. And you have to get involved once you retire. Yes. It's you know, for you, I'm, it's good for the community. I'm down here at least three days a week mm -hmm. right. for various, you know, programs. Right. Absolutely. And it's better than staying home and watching television. Oh, that's God, sure. especially now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's really crazy. Now, the last thing I want to mention is you, you bought the house from Lester Nelson. Correct? No, actually, my aunt owned it. Oh, your aunt the housing. What happened is once Lester Nelson and his wife passed away, mm -hmm. they left the house to my aunt and uncle Oh, that lived diagonally across the street from them. Okay. And then I wound up, once my aunt passed away, I wound up buying the, um, you know, the house from the, from the estate. From the estate. Well, you've done a great job with it. I, I always tell your daughter I love the, the paint job. That, oh, it that needs a new paint, paint job. 
But prior, it was just shake. Uh, that was brown, brown color. Brown color, which was kind of, kind of depressing for a historical home. It's one of the most historical homes in Pearl River. And, of course, the barmaid was visited by Aaron Burr. Uh, that was uh, the real reason he came up, not to see the... Um, the family who lived on South Middletown Road, the niece of uh, the folks there, the Conks House, she uh, she had the uh, her and her husband, and his name was Lynch, and they had the uh, farm, and he would go up and visit. But he was every evening he was over there, pitching woo to his girlfriend and drinking in the tap room, and it must be interesting. So it's really one of the most interesting places in Pearl River. And I even have an outhouse in the back. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> well, that was, you know, when it was a hotel or tavern, it was a stop of drovers. They would come from the interior and they would pen, there were pens in going down the road and they would put their animals in the pen, go in, spend the night, eat, sleep. And then they were off to Nyack where they got on uh, river sloops and, took their uh, animals to be sold in Manhattan. And, you know, on one of those trips, that's how the Baptist religion came to Pearl River. Hmm. Um, it's very interesting. Thank you so much for talking to me. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure. And I, I will see you at at least three or four. You'll uh, see me tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Excellent. Well, I'm. you know what? Everybody should be like you. We, we pay our taxes. We should take advantage of what we pay for. You have no right to complain if you don't use it, right? Well, it's fun, and you get to meet other people. Yeah. That's, you know, that's really and that's, that's basically why I do it. Right. This is the Las Vegas of people person. Yeah. You know, because you come in, and everybody in, in town's here. Or, or you could wait 12 hours or so and see them in ShopRite. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Our, but we, we're, we're proud here of becoming a community center. More than just, you know, here's your book, so long, to have people in and get to know them and th this multi-generational um, aspect of it is great because it, that's what builds a community as far as I'm concerned. You should be proud because there's nothing around like it. I mean, we don't have a senior center, so this is where a lot of the seniors come and meet. A absolutely. Great. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome.